For this month's Future Friday, we're going to be looking at the future of healthcare and medicine, from exoskeletons that can allow the paralyzed to walk again to cancer-killing nanobots that could soon be flowing through our bloodstreams. Joining me from Vancouver for a look at what lies ahead is futurist Nick Badminton. Nick, thanks so much for being here. It's good to be here. All right, let's, let's talk exoskeletons that we just mentioned. Um, what are they, and how long before these become viable options for those suffering from paralysis? So yeah, so exoskeletons are just additional technology that we attach to our limbs that help us move like we, we've always meant to move, and in some cases to give it extra strength as well. In the, in the case of paralysis, it means uh, giving people the ability to walk where they couldn't do that before. Now, the future also holds a cure for blindness. I believe we actually showcased this on Your Morning a little while ago. Tell us about this technology that already is allowing those with certain types of blindness to see. Yeah, so uh, this, this system, eSight, uh, allows people to, 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 to wear it and actually it, it boosts uh, what their system's already doing and it activates the cells so that people can actually see. So imagine this, this is a huge revolution for people that, that do have uh, uh, blindness so they can get back to work, they can do different things um, just with, with more certainty and, and like everyone else that can actually see normally. Uh, let's move on to cancer. The Canadian Cancer Society uh, has some shocking numbers that say that one in two Canadians will suffer from some form of cancer at some point in their lifetime. But researchers say that nanobots could be the cure that we're looking for. They could be the answer to killing these tumors. Yeah. Yeah, so nanobots are incredibly small machines. About 50,000 of them can fit across the width of a human hair. And uh, there's been some experiments just on uh, um, fish organisms and, and into some sort of uh, uh, poultry organisms to actually attack cancer cells. And they found that they can build these little, little robots that can be activated by light that drill into cancer and kill them within uh, 60 seconds. So just think of that potential of, of being able to be injected with this technology activated by light, and then maybe we do find a cure for cancer. So you just said potential, you said being used on, uh, on fish and on chicken. This is not something that's right around the corner. Yeah, no, you, obviously this is going through trials. Uh, it, looks, it looks very positive that this is something that could activate um, within the human organism. I, I do think that we, we have to be very careful of this technology and we have to really work out what happens once, uh, once it's done its job and stays in the system a little bit. Uh, Nick, um, the Japanese are leading when it comes to what's called robot caregivers. What are they? What sort of tasks are they performing? Yeah, so in Japan, people are getting older and, and, and young people aren't really having children. So the, the aging population is a problem. They do two things. One, uh, these care robots, they can carry people from, from one place to another. An average caregiver lifts someone about 40 times a day. So this, this really helps in, uh, in keeping humans to, to do the more empathetic connection pieces of, of the puzzle. Uh, and they also allow for connection. So when uh, old, old people feel isolated and lonely, these robots can have screens and you can connect them to to other family members and caregivers to, to really boost up that empathetic connection. Nick, last question for you. Blue sky it for me. When you think of what a human being looks like 100 years from now, what are, what are we talking about? How much of us is human? How much of us is organic? How much of us yeah. is robot? Yeah, so uh, I, I talk about human 3.0. So our ability to add technology to our bodies to be able to keep us stronger, living for longer. I, I think that there's going to be those that have, have the ability to do that financially and those that don't. I think the healthcare systems are going to help those in need. I think there's going to be some very wealthy people choosing to have prosthetic limbs and, and choose to live longer with a lot of technology. And they're going to be almost like superhumans. Nick Badminton, thanks so much for laying it out for us. Thank you.